up? Welcome back to Back to the Classics, the Cinematic Movie Podcast. It takes you back to the iconic films of 20 years ago, right here on the Big Three, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and iTunes. I am your guy, of course, your guy, Jay Alonzo, with me, of course, is... Danger Neff, David Danger Neff. What's going on, partner? What's happening? How we doing, man? Yeah, and you know, it's it's almost tax day, so, you know... Tax day for, hasn't come yet? No, nah, it's the 15th, <laughs> Shows on my which China. tells me that you need a tax man. Yeah. I, I definitely Hey need, Mr. Tax Man. I definitely need something. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but uh how was the week? Y- you know, uh, yeah, work is kind of whatever right now. You and me both. Uh, well, I, I can't necessarily say it's whatever. It's just been a a trying week, so yes, to speak. Yes. Like things that you were that we would normally kind of like blow by. It's just been like like at the forefront, like so listen. What the fuck are you going to do? That's what we're going to call, this is what this episode should be called, the trying week. The trying week. <laughs> I mean, not just at work, just in life in general. Exactly. Like, like ooh. Trying. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try. But uh, besides that, though, we've had a pretty solid week. Um, uh, once again, another shout out to uh, my lady, Chelsea, who was on with us last week. Yeah, that was a fun show. It was a fun show. Well, actually, the show came out, what, yesterday? Uh, I think. Tech- as, as we're recording this. Yeah, as we're recording this. No, it dropped today. Oh, it, 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 right, it did drop today. So check out the Little Mermaid episode. It did drop today. We're, we're slightly late. But uh, nevertheless, we had a show for you, just like we have one, one today. Um, we caught a movie. Caught a few movies, actually. Yeah. Um, the last one we caught, um, we went and saw, oh, Pet Cemetery. Yeah. And. It was all right. I, you know, I, I, I didn't really care for it. I, okay, it's all right. It's better than the original, and I'll and right. I'll and I'll say this: like the original Pet Cemetery, it's just dated. It's not a bad movie. It's mm-hmm. just it really feels like it's a nineteen eighties like horror movie and whatnot. It, it, was, um, it, it was for the time, right? Mm-hmm. There was a couple nice little twists that they did in this one um, that was a little bit different than Pet Cemetery, but uh, than the original. But at the end of the day, it's a little forgettable. It is, um, and also for me, I, I um, while it is forgettable, it's also extremely predictable. Um, uh, yeah, but you kind of expect that. Yeah, you do, but you, you never think about that third act. You kind of know exactly where we're going. With yeah, this, of course. You know, uh, and is and you know, unlike uh, the original movie, there's not a lot of changes from the original movie, except for that one key change. You know, we won't, we won't spoil it, but well. They had the two kids, which is definitely very different from from uh, what it was. But I'll tell you where my issue was with the movie. Um, there are times where the acting can really hit where it's supposed to hit. Right. And then, like, Jason Clark. All right. You know what? Fuck it. Full spoilers. So, oh, so we're going full spoilers. Now. Yeah, I, I don't care. Um, Jason Clark is very wooden. So he is wooden. Um, and here's why. Obviously, with Pet Cemetery, the the idea is, is that you bury the dead in this right. cemetery, and they come back from the dead, and they're right. supposed to, you know, so happy go lucky, you know, if a terrible tragedy happens to you, that's the kind of point of this. So the lesson of the movie is sometimes you just gotta let the things that go to the ground to stay in the ground, right? You know, which I know that seems weird because supernatural and whatnot. Um, yeah, the one scene that just it, that it, what took me out of the movie. You ever get that scene where where you're into the movie and then they show a scene and it just takes you right out, like you just don't care what's going to happen with it. It was a few. All right, I felt that way about. So in this one, so the little girl dies, and right. it's where the change of it actually happens. Because in the original one, because it's only one child, the little boy runs out and semi trailer kills him. Right, right. and this one. The semi trailer actively tries to avoid the little boy saved, but whatever was on the trailer, which in this case is like a gas a gas fuel tank or fuel sorry, tanker right. or whatnot, basically comes crashing through and hits the little girl and kills her, right? Okay. They built up the relationship of the father and the little girl, and they actually did a pretty decent job at that. Right. My issue with, with it was at the funeral. Why are you not devastatedly crying? Which is what I had a major problem with. It, 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 go, it, it goes back to this Jason, like, like Jason Clark is a great actor. No, 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 no. 
Jason Clark is an okay actor. Oh, no, no, no. You, you gotta give him credit where credit is due. I think uh, the things you can see him in is really the material that he's given. No, no. We're gonna talk about this. No, no, we can. Well, go, go ahead. What What is he necessarily great in that he's just like, wow, he really stands out in that? Oh, you're gonna call me out. Okay. Uh, I, I have to kind of call it out here. All right. He was in Terminator Genesis, right? Horrible. The entire point of that is but that the movie's to... shitty, though, at the same time. Okay. The, mo- the movie was shitty. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie about that, but mm-hmm. it's like. It's like, yeah, Terminator, uh, Terminator Genesis, the entire idea of it is that, like, he's playing John Connor. And the twist in that was, like, wait a minute, the whole savior thing? Like, he's just like, no, I'm tired of being the savior. So you kind of want that, like, pull from John Connor, like, this great leader. And then it's just, like, like pulls you back. I didn't get that Lawless. At all. Lawless. He has a great performance in Lawless. Okay. Tom Hardy and Shia LaBeouf. He, he stands out in Lawless. But I feel like Shia LaBeouf and Tom Hardy overshadow him throughout it. No, no. I mean, you Tom Hardy. So? No, I don't know. Well, Shia LaBeouf is one thing. Tom Hardy is hard to overshadow him. But the fact that he stood up to those two. Oh, I disagree. I disagree that it's hard to overshadow Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf, as crazy as a person mm-hmm. as he is, is a much better actor than Jason Clark ever is. Mm. The movie Fury blows him out of the water in any performance that he's ever Yeah, that's had. one movie, though. That's Fury. You know what I'm saying? I can keep going. That's better than than what Jason Clark has ever put out. What Eagle Eye? Eagle Eye was a decent movie. It was decent, yeah. But Even in the early Transformer movies, before before it got like the super, first one, the first one, Only yeah, the first one. But that's what I'm saying. I just gave you three. <laughs> well, whatever. Anyway, I like you. Also agree that uh, that funeral scene where he has zero emotions. Right. I was just like. And then, really, it's, it's a it's a tell. Like you could just tell what he's thinking, what he wants to do, right? In you know where the next, you know where we're gonna go after this funeral, and after he tells the wife, "Yo, I want you to get away for a little while." Yeah, I'm gonna stay up here for a little while. Like I know exactly what the fuck you're gonna do. Of course, yeah. And you know, and, and kudos to John Lithgow because he's he is definitely the standout in the movie. Yeah, but there, I mean, there's logic issues with this character as well. But go ahead. But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes dead is better, right? You know, which I think it's a great line. But <laughs> he I just, literally, he literally like like he recommends to Jason Clark to bring back the pet in the first in the first church, right? Church, and he's just like, weird oh, name for a cat, right? Yeah, and then he's all like, he's like, oh, I thought it was going to be different because when I did it, I had a mean spirited dog. It's like. What? That's your logic? I thought it was going to be different. Why did you try this with like a frog? Like why did why don't you kill a frog? Or like a turtle or something. You right, know? right. And you know cuz you know that that frog's going to be tethered to you at that point. Right. You know, so so why don't why don't you bring back the frog? And let's see how the frog is acting towards you. Is he like aggressively like trying to punk you? If you step on the fucking frog, it's dead. Are there and any then you kind of get your idea. Are there any frogs in Maine? In Maine, absolutely. Okay. I, I, I know well, uh, Maine. Fine. Like a squirrel or or less than that. Kill a fish. Bring back a fish. Yeah, yeah there you go. Like Kill a fish. Stuff. Put it in the bowl. Stick your hand in. Does a fish try to bite you? Yeah. Okay. Th- dump it out. Flush it. <laughs> I'd fucking flush it. No, don't flush it. Just dump it out. Let's suffocate. Let's so, die. So if we were doing really bad, what, what would you <laughs> give it out of a... Uh... Pet cemetery? Yeah. Uh, probably five. I'm thinking more like a three. Oh, well, that's fair. Yeah. yeah that's me, you, ain't, you ain't getting much argument from me there. No. Uh, we got a trailer. Um, I'm a big fan of this series. I, I enjoyed it when growing up and kind of watching it, like Nick at night and whatnot. Um, they just dropped the newest trailer for The Adams <laughs> Family animation movie which i i think it's pretty proper for it to do so now the 1990s version of the adams family as campy as it is like it had some memorable performances in it especially I, with morticia those are, those are classics to me man exactly yeah uh raul julia as Maybe gomez space, yeah. yeah amazing and of course wednesday adams was Christina Ricci and uh, christopher lloyd is uncle fester yeah christopher lloyd you is know? uncle fester uh, a lot I, of good stuff with it i definitely enjoy adam's family values more yeah than the first one yeah but those two together are at this point now i wouldn't call them cult classics but definitely classic but films. The, i mean they kind of are like like you could put that on for for a family for a family event and whatnot like especially if you have little ones like okay I mean, it holds up. like like yeah okay it's a little creepy i mean i watched it recently and mm-hmm. yeah, I was still laughing at a lot of the jokes they were they were kind of throwing out there. I really I, I love Adam's Family Values because it's almost like they kind of 
they didn't strip away what it is to be the Adams family, but what right, they did right. was they kind of incorporated the weirdness of the family and with like everyday life, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, exactly. And then it it, it, it kind of made it seem like it wasn't necessarily them who were weird, it's motherfuckers around them who were who Right, were exactly. Weird. Like, like I'm not weird. Like you guys are doing all the weird shit around here. I'm just trying to live my normal life with right. my, with you know, with, with Frankenstein as my butler. Now, or or the hand walking around like, yeah, like that's yeah, not yeah. that's not odd. That's that's our, that's our pet. I kind of wish they would have brought in. Uh, I, and and forgive me for those who are huge fans of the Adams family, but cousin it. I uh, I don't think we get a proper like appearance from him. Cousin it was the one that has like the <laughs> hair. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the hair that goes down and kind of has like the Beatles sunglasses. Like the, the, the long Never wig. see his face. Never see his face whatsoever. It was just like a tiki hut for a. Uh, I think we'll get a cousin Ned appearance in this movie. Yeah. We'd, we'd have to because, I mean, it's animation, so you have no choice. Very true. But but but, <laughs> but, but, but when you think Adam's family, you like you know you're gonna get your Gomez, your Morticia's, your Wednesday, your Pugsley, Fester, cousin Ned, thing. I you really know. would like to see Angelica Angelica Houston like reprise that role. Who's who's voicing her in this movie? I don't know, and and that's information we really should have had. But I, I know you have um, uh, Oscar Isaac doing Gomez, which I think is a great pull. That is a great pick. But uh, f- you know, for the for it being the teaser, Halloween is a damn good spot to put a new Adam Sandler movie at. Yeah, especially because like Halloween is is one of those like. I know, I know a lot of people are like doing it as like the slutty thing and whatnot, but I still really remember as a family, like, yeah, like whole family thing and whatnot. But the one thing about, 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 uh, Raul Julia and, uh, Angelica Houston's take on Gomez and Morticia, it was like, they were like freaks. Like, not, not like you're freaky, but they're like sex fiends in a, in a weird way. And it's almost like they kind of played it off amongst the kids, like, oh, this is, this is what mommy and daddies do, you know? Like, like they kind of just show their love for each other. In front of everybody, you know? <laughs> so real quick, just to kind of give you an idea of who the cast is, uh, you have Oscar Isaac as, as Gomez. Mm-hmm. You have uh, Chloe Grace Moretz as Wednesday. That that could be interesting. Not a bad not, not, not a bad one. Uh, Finn Wolfhand for Pugsley. Not a bad one. Um, you also have Nick Kroll as Uncle Fester, which actually... Does sound good to me, it actually. Does, right? I'm cool with it. And the reason why I say that too, real quick, because uh, over, the, over this past year, and shout out to Loves for this as well, uh, over the past year, I have a newfound respect for Nick Kroll. <laughs> He's just insane. He's insane. But what he does on Big Mouth on Netflix, I've I, I, before Big Mouth, I never found him to be all that funny, almost right. like obnoxious. Right. But the fact that what he does with Big Mouth, the fact that that's his show, oh my God. <laughs> I can now see Nick Kroll killing Uncle Fester, and I'll be totally into it. Uh, Bette Midler for Grandmama. I'm totally down for that too. And uh, Morticia Adams, Charlize Theron. I'm down. Oh man, I I'm really done. Look, I'm, I got I'm, I'm I got down. a major crush on Charlize. I'm down. So. Now now let me ask you a question because this is an animated movie. Would you, would you prefer to be a, a, an animated movie or we could do a a reboot, make it live action? Oh sure, I would love a I would love a true reboot uh, to it. But if if the cards ain't there and they're trying to and they're it, look, if the version that I'm getting it, it has to be whatever the studio is saying and anime is going to be what it is, I wouldn't mind an anime. I just think you know what it is. The reason why they're not going live action is because we already have so many shows out there mm. that. Really draw people into kind of like that creepiness uh, vibe, you know. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we've had Supernatural. They just announced their series finale after fifteen seasons. Right. Fifteen seasons. I've never seen a single episode. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I know people who are. Um, you have the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and then you Which have you're a fan of. Yeah, yeah I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's I don't know. <laughs> I'm I, I'm still not sold. I'm still not sold on this uh, on the second part. But uh, Julian Adventures is Sabrina, and then you also have Riverdale, which a lot of people really enjoy. So, and, and then you still have your Once Upon a Time. Like, so you see what I'm saying? Like, like mm. there's already a lot of stuff out there. Making an anime is not going to draw me away from it because the Adams Family has never really pushed the envelope in that case. Mm. Um, unlike the Monsters, for example, uh, which really was like about kind of equality and integrating people in. No, the Ams fame was just like, look, we're doing our own thing. We don't really care what anybody else is like, doing. Like, we're weird, and that's just basically what it is. Right, no. Everybody else is weird. We're fine. Right. We're just kind of doing we're, our like, own thing. In our eyes, we're deemed normal. Right. Compared to what you would see as weird. Right. Now, um, 
now correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the two movies came before the animated series, correct? Yes. Okay, so the last time we actually got anything Adam Sandler related was the animated series. Right. Yeah, I know they were trying to even reboot that in the early 2000s, but it just it wasn't it wasn't clicking at that time. Right. But you know, just the characters are so iconic to this point. Even the the theme song, like we hear that, da, 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 you know exactly what it exactly. is. Exactly. And so I feel as if now uh, we're in an era to where. A animation reboot of the of this of these characters can actually work around Halloween time, which is a great time to put it. It is. Um, you have no real competition except uh, what does it part two drop? Oh, I couldn't. Summertime. I couldn't, yeah, probably. Oh, I'm gonna assume summertime. You know. So, but as far as something that you could take the kids to for Halloween, like you, right. you really have no competition. Yeah, especially because like like the kids would be in school for about six weeks, eight weeks at that point. Mm-hmm. You know, depending on what state you live in. So. At that point, you're just kind of sitting there and you're like, you're like, okay, I really need to get the kids out of the house. Hey, here's a kid's movie we can all go to and whatnot. Well, you know, for those who don't necessarily trick or treat, you know, you always <clears throat> take the kids to the movies. All right, exactly. But uh, uh, Adam's Family does drop on Halloween. Uh, no. So, no. Uh, October 11th. Oh. Which is even a little bit better if you think about it. Because you need the traction going into Halloween. Okay. Okay. You know, but October 11th is I'm gonna when it drops. It. I'm, I'm going to see it. Yeah. I'm going to check it out. It's going to be fun. Uh, next order of business, uh, we have an announcement to make. Um, we, as in <laughs> myself and, uh, uh, I'm going to call you Super Dave. Danger Dave <laughs> Neff. Uh, we're gonna Super call- Dave? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, we are going to be uh, working media at the Level Up Expo right here in Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, taking place. Uh, it takes place April 26th through the 28th. Um, and what the Level Up Expo is, is that it's a whole bunch of, uh, it's basically an anime convention where they also do uh, video game tournaments and uh, a whole bunch of vendors are going to be out there uh, and whatnot. Um, we've been pushing really hard to kind of get more Vegas events uh, mm-hmm. to get in. Unfortunately, we missed out on CinemaCon, which sucks, but, you know. We'll, there was we'll, no promotion for it. It just kind of just came and went. Not only that, but the press media for it, like. Caesars strictly handles all their all their press media. Right. So it wasn't even possible to get press passes for it. Right. Yeah, it sucks. But we will but, be at the level of expo. Um, myself and Dave. I believe Lowe's gonna join us as well. But we're hoping Lowe's gonna join us. We're hoping. But uh it's all a part of uh, bringing up more content and seeing us out in the streets in the mud, you know, uh really getting things done and uh I'm looking forward to it actually. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh quick list of guests that are going to be out there for those of you who are anime fans. Uh the four characters of Ruby will be there. Uh that is Lindsay Jones, Aaron Zach, uh Kara Eberly and Barbara Dunkel Dunkelman. Man, I was I was going to butcher that one. That was awful. Uh yeah, good old college try though. That's right. Uh Sony Strat who voices Krillin in Dragon Ball is going to be there. Uh, he also plays, uh, I can't think of the character's name, but the main villain in My Hero Academia, uh, for those who follow. Uh, Eric Vale, who plays uh, Trunks in Dragon Ball Z, mm-hmm. is going to be there. Uh, you have the voice of Mario, Luigi, Warrior, and Waluigi, which is Charles Martinet. That will also, uh, that'll be there. And probably the biggest name out of all these guys, the voice of Vegeta and Piccolo, Chris Sabat, is going to also be there. As well as the voice of the Crypt Keeper. I I would love to meet him to let him know how much you freak my you, you freak me out my entire life. Yeah, John Cassier. Yes, I used to watch Tales from the Crypt. Like that needs to be rebooted. It does, but I mean, mm-hmm. if you think if you look at the Crypt Keeper now versus back then, it's like mm, no, yeah, nah. <laughs> it's it's got no. It's got to be campy. It's got to be all that. Oh, absolutely. You know, but you need to at least make him to where he's scary to look at for sure. Right, of course. Now uh, and Tony Todd. Now that, that that's that's one I, I want to touch on for a second because, um, as a avid movie fan, a, as a cinephobe, um, Tony Todd has frightened me. As <laughs> Candyman. Was, oh, not just Candyman. <laughs> We're talking about uh, the the. Uh, the the mortician in Final Destination. We're That's talking, right. Yes, he was. We're, we're talking about uh, hell. Anything that has Tony Todd in it, uh, uh, outside of uh, we, I think he played a probation officer. Yes, I can't um, think of what movie though. I'm not. I'm not going to be able to get it. But Tony Todd idolizes scary as fuck. To yeah, me. he is. His his stature, his voice. Hell, uh, to this day, and and the funny thing about it was, if if you 
if you think about it, Candyman is one of those movies, one of those series of movies where I don't give a fuck how tough you think you are. Mm-hmm. You will not stand in the mirror and say that man's name five times. No, you will not. I mean, you said Bloody Mary three <laughs> times. I kind of see what happens. But Candyman, five times? Right. You got to call him two extra times to get him to come fuck with you? There's no way you will sit in, that, you'll sit in the mirror. I'm not scared of nothing. I don't even care. Right. right, like, right. Candyman. 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 Fuck that. No, never mind. Never mind. Forget <laughs> it. So I want to let Tony Todd know, and I hope we, I get a chance to actually talk to him. We get a chance to talk to him to let him know. You have frightened me my entire Even as a grown ass <laughs> 31 year old man, I still get, I still feel a bit off talking to you. Right. Uh, and I want to give a special shout out to uh, this final guest I'm going to list. Uh, personal fan favorite. I've been watching the series since you guys first brought it in almost 10 years ago. And the fact that. The fact that you can legitimately make an argument that's better than the original show you were, you're parodying is great. Uh, the team of Team Four Star that's Grant uh, that's Grant Smith, uh, uh, Kieran Summerlin who plays uh, Kaiser, and also Tyler Coy is going to be there. These guys uh, uh, have fantastic material when it comes to the anime side. They they finished up uh, Van uh, Van Helsing. Uh, yeah, no, sorry, not Van Helsing. Helsing Ultimate. A bridge last year, mm-hmm. absolutely fantastic. They just finished their 60th episode of Dragon Ball Z: A Bridge, and all the crap that they've had to deal with that uh, through the uh, Kira to- uh, Toy animation, and all that, uh, and all that jazz. I am so pumped. I really am. Like I am so pumped to actually meet these guys because, in a lot of ways, I kind of grew up with them, right. uh, watching watching their stuff through YouTube and all that. Uh, unfortunately, I can't relate, but at the same time, I am pumped to just. To get out and just, just you be know, there. you, you know, know then, so, just be there. So you'll catch Jay and I for sure. Hopefully, Los will, will be able to uh, be there. We'll work camera. We'll work. We'll try to work some interviews in there. We'll try to bring you all the latest in and entertainment there. And give and, the dates uh, again. Yeah, April twenty sixth through the twenty eighth. Uh, That's a Friday, Saturday, is Sunday. At the uh, Las Vegas Convention Las Vegas Center. Convention Center. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Level of Expo, BTTC, Beat Network will be in the building. If you see us, come check us out. Come say hi. All right, so let's get into some two-minute drill. Um, fun. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm going to lose today. The I, I, why, know, I know you are. This movie just did not stick with me. So I can say right now, yeah. You might as well say, er, now, because I'm going to pretty much lose every <laughs> question that's coming my way. But let's get it going. Two-minute drill starts now. All right. How many times has Anita been fired? Eight times. Correct. Uh, what is Rob's car's name? Three, two, the bad one. one. No, Amy. Okay. Uh, who plays Merkin? Uh, Merkin is uh, Sean Whalen. I hate his, his face is hot. I know. It's, it's absolutely awful. What is the name of the math team? <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, numbers. One. <laughs> the denominators. I, and I literally just saw the damn shirt as, as I, okay. Uh, Guy and Josie attend prom as Robson and Orlando for which Shakespeare play? Uh, oh, God. I, I'm not going to get this one. Three, um, two, shot in the dark. Uh, as you like it. As you like it. Okay. That's fair. Uh, A minute, two. Oh, God. That's good. <laughs> yeah, we, we sure do. Uh, what story when Josie introduces herself to the rest of the class does she give? Uh, uh shit. Uh, she gets distracted. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh, right, cool. uh, she's from Billy Bali, and that her family were sheep farmers. Okay. All of it lies. All right. Uh, now uh, her first day of school, she's attending what school? Uh, South Central South. No, that's South Glen South. Or I that's told. it, South Glen South. South Central South. Yeah, because it's South Central. It's it's Chicago. It sounds like Spot in LA. <laughs> it really does. Uh, oh, I sixteen even seconds. Knew, I even knew that. Uh, place where the kids hung out after school. McDonald's. No, McCourt. <laughs> and I just read it. I literally just read it. Oh my god, <laughs> I just read it. All right. Uh, 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 okay, 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 okay. Uh, Josie confides in her brother. Oh, uh, her brother? Yes. 
Uh, that's David Arquette. David Arquette, the wild one. Man. The wild one, man. Well, if you don't know, if you don't know what we were talking about, we are taking it back to 1999, <clears throat> of course. Uh, actually, as we're doing recording today, the movie came out today. Yeah, that's twenty years awesome. ago today, which is a rare week we actually get that going. <laughs> uh, Never been kissed. Um, original release date April 9th of 1999. Shares opening weekend with Go. I love Go. Go is such a dope flick. Yeah, but Never Been Kissed was. Never Been Kissed is one of those movies that that okay, of the chick flick movies that we've had to cover this year so far, and we've covered quite a bit. You don't say. Um, it's probably the one that's actually the most remarkable, uh, because in, in a lot of sense, it gives you one of the best actresses out there in these romantic comedies, and Drew Barrymore. Mm. And at this point, if you think about the star of when Drew Barrymore was at this point in her career, keep in mind. In her early like 1990s, she was kind of a, a bit of a, of a wild child. Like Flash, David Letterman on his show, mm-hmm. you know, uh, was kind of all over the place. Drugs, uh, drugs was definitely a part of it, <laughs> no, no, no doubt about it. But during this 1998 1999 period, she dropped, you know, uh, the Wedding Singer in 1997. Uh, Ever After comes the very next year. Ever After would come the very next year, which a lot of people say is the best Cinderella story to ever be made, and they are wrong. Uh, Fever Pitch, which would be Fallon, comes That would be in 2002, yeah. Yep. Uh, We'll also get 50 First Dates. 50 First Dates would be 2004. So this is like, and and then then Charlie's Theron, uh, uh, or not Charlie's, uh, Charlie's Angels. (laughs) Charlie's Angels uh, would would come out in (laughs) 2000. One. Yeah, it's yep. around there. Mm-hmm. 2000, 2001, 2002. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she also, and this was the first movie that was actually made by her studio uh, that was out there, Never Been Kissed. Do you know what other movie they did? Flower Films. Um, I can see it. I, I remember seeing the movie where it said produced by Drew Barrymore. Right. Oh, shit. Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko. Damn it. That is such a... It's so weird because it's a lot, switch in what it you is. expect her to do. It, well, and and because she is in Donnie Darko, also she doesn't play the biggest role, but mm-hmm. she's like trying to be like this eccentric type and whatnot. So it's a little interesting to kind of see her like like in this role, um, and it's literally what everybody clicked with her because they saw her in Wedding Singer and they saw how great she was in Wedding Singer. She's fantastic, mm-hmm. and in this role, really. Even though, even though the writing is just not good mm-hmm. uh, in this, um, it's it's kind of a legendary performance for for her. Well, the production budget was at twenty five million. Box office total coming in at eighty four point five million. Uh, currently sitting at a fifty five percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's about fair. That's a bit too fair, if you ask me. But you know, <laughs> that's only if you ask me. Um, now, uh, confession to be made: <clears throat> I watched this movie for the first time. Uh, I will never forget um, in 1999, uh, around the time Go came out, because I, I, I really want to see Go. Um, and also that same year, we got uh, Spy with Shaggy, Austin Powers 2. Right. And so I remember going to theaters and seeing the the one sheet, the posters for this movie. Right. And I, I, I also knew around that time, Drew Barrymore had that face to where I was, she's pretty hot. Yeah, she was. She was a very, very... But I, I just never found the the interest in the interest in seeing the movie until I got older. So right. watching it today, or and or yesterday, watching it today, I I, I felt as if I'll, I'll give you this: the movie does play out like a movie set in the '90s, the late '90s would play out as far as the soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, oh God, the cast is insane. It is actually, you know. Uh, the, Oh my God! Molly Shannon's in this. John C. Riley's in this. Yeah, John C. Riley's uh, in Jessica this. Alba, Gary Marshall, Gar- recipes Gary Marshall. You know, and and oh man, I have so much to say on Gary Marshall in this one because so, he is he is by far, um, <clears throat> he is by far my favorite character in this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it, it 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 was something to to really realize. Like even James Franco. This was James Franco's first flick. And yeah, Franco's first flick, uh, Jessica Alba. Alba first, Jessica Alba. Yep, is smack dab in the middle of this movie. Lily you know. Lily Sobieski. Yep, uh, retired actress now, but she was. Everybody felt like she was going to be an up and coming actress, and just it never panned out the way that that everybody wanted it to. I can't think of anything. A, a lot of stuff I've seen. Uh, she was in what Deep Impact. She, she was, was in, in Glass Deep House. Impact, uh, The Glass House. Uh, she was also, um, oh man. She played a bad guy, and she was actually not. But she was in uh, Joyride. 
Joyride. Joyride's yeah. underrated. Everybody, everybody sleeps on that movie, and I'm like, you, you guys are are missing out. Um, she did a lot of miniseries afterwards. Right. Like I know she got a Golden Globe nom right. for for one of them, Uprising, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she just, I feel bad because like I, I feel bad for her because she had talent. It just she did not have the look whatsoever. Everybody would confuse her with Julia Stiles. Yeah, now that I understand, but to me, I think I felt like she had to look. I just feel like her talent was almost kind of wooden. Yeah, you know, like okay, like but like for example, let's say we're comparing both her and Julia Styles, right? Julia Styles also has that very wooden approach to things, to where, but but, but unlike Lily, Julia can actually kind of bring out some emotion, sure, and really kind of convey some emotion. It really right. It, that came with Save the Last Dance. I, I'll, I'll say this about Lily Sobieski. In this movie, she is the biggest pain in the ass. And like, and like, and like, how this movie kind of like wraps up for her. Like, nothing bad happened to her. I'm kind of like, like, nah. Eh. <laughs> nah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm not sure if I really feel that. All right, so this movie kicks off. Uh, you have Josie Geller, who is an insecure 25-year-old copy editor, the youngest copy editor for the Chicago Sun-Times, who has been kissed but has never really like been in love or been in a real relationship. Mm-hmm. And her editor-in-chief, <clears throat> her boss is played by John C. Riley, And John C. Riley is a little bit... He's too angry in this for, for, me, to, for me to fully like enjoy him in this. Um, and it's because early in his career, he used to always get, he, al- he always had to play like the angry role in it. And that's just not who John C. Riley is yeah, whatsoever. I, I agree with that, which I've noticed <clears throat> as well. Even with this movie being, being back in 99, prior to this movie, what he's, he's in Boogie Nights. He's in a few other flicks I, I've seen. Right. Boogie Nights, what he was goofy and he was great in it. Yeah. But he also had, had a serious undertone as well. Right. But. I feel like we didn't get the goofy John C. Riley until the mid two thousands. Yeah, and it's until almost like Step Brother. Yeah, until Step Brother. When you dropped. actually realize he can be funny, he can be oh, hilarious. He's hilarious. And you know that the the Adult Swim stuff came after that, right? And you know he started uh, Walk Hard came after that. So he, Walk he was Hard shown, is so underrated. I love Walk Hard. It's a great <laughs> movie, man. I, I love Walk Hard. But on top of that, I love Step Brothers. Like, yeah. I dude, Step Brothers is in my in, in my opinion. The upper echelon of like comedy movies, like I could watch a movie anytime and just and just fall in love with it every time I watch it. Right. But earlier John C. Riley stuff was like you're kind of known for being like more serious than anything else. So to see you do goofy shit is like this is weird. This is weird right. to see. But then eventually we, we got used to it. Right. So Josie Geller uh, kind of plays the girl that's just not respected, you know. And unfortunately, when it comes to a role like this, when when you're not respected, it's kind of hard to kind of gain the respect uh, throughout the movie. Um, but there is legitimately uh, funny parts. Molly Shannon kind of plays like her best friend slash the hoe of the office. Like, like uh, she's pretty, yeah, she, yeah. she's pretty much slept around with everybody. She's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Octavia Spencer's in this, which tripped me out when I saw. I said, "Oh, was that Octavia?" Yep, Octavia Spencer. But then again, in this. Octavia's been around for a long. Yeah, time. she like has. The been. Jamie Foxx show to other things she had been doing. Doing so, the fact that her career took off the way it did is like wow. Right. Um, and there's a lot of good stuff uh, in this. But one day, her editor-in-chief, Rigfert, who is played by Gary Marshall, and he is absolutely legendary in this mm-hmm. because he plays the asshole boss. For those of you who don't know who Gary Marshall is, this is the writer – or not not the writer because it's Neil Simon who wrote it. But this is the guy that basically made the odd couple. Mm-hmm. Like, like without him, we would not have had all those spawn of sequels that that basically would have happened afterwards, and probably the the comedic performances that would uh, that we would see afterwards, like Forty Eight Hours. You know, right. there, there's um, and Gary Marshall uh, would actually do a lot of uh, romantic comedies. He would actually direct quite a bit of them, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, but he is man, he he is in a class of his own in, in, in this movie. Now, Gary is what. <laughs> Penny's what father? No, or brother. Uh, oh god, I know they're related in some kind of way, but what? What, what are they to each other? Um, so Penny Marshall, who uh, passed away last year, rest in peace. Yeah, we, we're, we're there's a lot of rest in peace lately. <laughs> oh, I mean, a bunch of them. Oh my god. I uh, let me get back to you on that one. All right, because I'm I'm just not going to get it right now. 
But uh, so Gary Marshall kind of comes in and and he's like, good morning. <clears throat> he's like, good morning. Slams his stick. He's like, the meeting has started. And he kind of talks about like he kind of talks about this like fluff piece that that was thrown out there. And they said they said, and, uh, you know, Dutton, he did a really, really good job uh, in this uh, in this story. It's just too bad that the Tribune did the same exact story and sold more papers because of it. So, Dutton, you're fired. Come to find out, Dutton is his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> like, he had no issue, like, whatsoever. I mean, it's not really, like, it's not really, like, a point that's kind of thrown out there. But it's, he's, he, he is just so terrific in this because he's every bit the jerk that, that you see in, like, horrible bosses and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um but they find a piece basically uh, to write a new story, and they are forcing Josie Geller, twenty five years old, to enroll back into high school. Right. For the record, a movie like this probably couldn't have been made today. Uh maybe. Well, maybe, maybe not. There, there, there are some. There, there, there is. I, I can't really say there's a creepy, creepy moment in this. No. But there's definitely like that moment where like. What's around it? Yeah, because you get the atmosphere, the, the 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 air of it, right? Right. Um, so her first day at South Glen South, I uh, she needs to basically look the part, right? So she borrows her brother, who is played by David Arquette. By the way, his last name is Geller, which is a little hilarious for those of you who are Friends fans. Uh, David Arquette's actual real life wife or ex wife at that point. Uh, played a Monica Geller, and that's Courtney Cox, obviously. Mm-hmm. So, coincidence? Eh, yeah, maybe. Eh. All right, maybe. Uh, she winds up borrowing this piece of shit car that oh, is god awful. You you know you know that thing smelled for years like after. jockstrap, like jockstrap and like jockstrap and Robertos. That's why exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what it sounded like. Uh, her first day is absolutely miserable. She comes in, she's wearing all whites. And she's wearing like this, 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 uh, what do you call it? I don't want to say it's a scarf, but you know, the, the thing that she's wearing, that's like kind of fizzy. And like looks, a shawl. Yeah. It's like a shawl. But you know what? She, she reverts back to that old geek persona that she was pretty much known for. Right. Because she, because she was always picked on as a little, uh, as a little girl, because she was absolutely the geek, mm-hmm. uh, throughout this. Um, her outfit though is what cracks me up because it's all white. Like right. it's all white. She stands out for some odd reason. She puts on concealer, so she actually looks like a fucking zombie, you know, walking into <laughs> class. And uh, one of the one of the uh, one of the girls basically like like says that they're like they're like that's so sad. She had to kill like five chickens to look that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so mean spirited. But anyway, she goes through the first day of school, and, and the whole thing is she's trying to find like the piece, the story. And she thinks, oh, the cafeteria food. No, nah, that's not really going to fly. Oh, uh, oh, you know, where are these girls' hopes and dreams and whatnot? But you can't fit into to the right uh, to the right spot. And she kind of, you could really tell that this part was improvised and it mm-hmm. wasn't written because she just starts like rhyming stuff in front of these people right. and is like laughing at her own joke, which is where they bring in uh, Jeremy Jordan. Am I getting that right? Yeah, Jeremy Jordan. Mm-hmm. Uh, who plays Guy Pierce? Guy Perkins. Guy Perkins. It's Guy nice. Pierce is an actor. By yeah, the way. I'm sorry, pal. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm out of it. Uh, <laughs> guy Perkins, who is well, he's the guy. He's such a douche. Guy. Such a douche name. Of course, it's a douche name for a douche character. Of co- guy Perkins. Guy Pierce is a douche name also, but we learn to like him. All guys named guys are just douches. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so so Guy Perkins, like like as she's rhyming again, mean spirited once again. She's he's all like, "Are you are you in special ed? Like are, like are you really? Are you really in special education?" It's just like it's <laughs> like that joke would not fly to this day, but man, that shit was funny back in '99. Yeah, we were, we weren't so PC now. But uh, now she does come across uh, the three girls: uh, Kirsten, Gibby, and uh, Kristen. Right. Am I saying that right? Uh, Kirsten, Kirsten, it, and it, Kristen. It, it's 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 Kirsten because it's Kirsten, Kristen, and Gibby. And I know this for a fact because I actually because uh, uh, Lund. Mm-hmm. His wife's name is Kirsten. <laughs> and it's crazy. Like, say like Kirsten Dunst. Because you met her. Oh, yeah. She's dope. Uh, now, like Kirsten Dunst. I was calling her Kirsten Dunst for it. 
forever. Yep. Houston does. Until I found out how to like pronounce her name. <laughs> um, but you know, so she kind of loses. Uh, she kind of loses his hope. But is reassured by uh, Lily Sobeski, uh, who is uh, Aldis is is her name again. Weird names that that this this movie likes to do quite a bit. Chicago. Um, yeah. Yeah. Chicago. Chicago. She invites uh, she invites her to join the denominators. Which is just kind of like this weird little group of intelligent students that <laughs> that's out there, uh, but she winds up starts developing this crush for her English teacher, her being an English nerd. And one of the things about Josie Keller that that you find out is that she is basically uh, a, a grammar Nazi. Like she'll correct you on every fucking use of a word, which kind of annoyed me off. Top. Of course, in nineteen ninety, uh, of course, we grew up in the internet age. In the internet age, you really don't want to be corrected anymore. Like, shut up, shut up! <laughs> oh my god, shut up! So, but she develops this crush for Sam Coulson, played by Michael Varton. Yeah, and he really didn't do he didn't anything. Do too much of anything, yeah. right? Uh, and becomes the top student in her class, reciting uh, reciting romantic excerpts from Shakespeare. Uh, and while she's doing this, she, she kind of, this happens quite a bit in this movie where, where you kind of get a flashback of what's going on and kids were, we thought kids were mean, you know, in 1999 or even today, like kids were awful. Like back, uh, like back then, like Mm -hmm. she's walking up, she's geeky. She looks horrible. Right. And they basically dump a, a, a can of Sprite into her backpack and make it look like she pissed herself. They're like dropping toilet paper inside her backpack. So it's kind of leaving a trail and whatnot. I'm just like, man, y'all, y'all are evil. I'm telling you, it's, it's movies like these. <laughs> I, and I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's movies like these that really do tether the high school experience. Like, like dude, like for anybody who, who grew up watching these <clears throat> coming of age movies, right? You expect to enter high school with a certain notion, like okay, so this this is gonna be this, this is gonna be that. Well, with this one though, like nothing about it is is really, it's not off uh, in a lot of things. No. So you you definitely had your geeks that mm-hmm. that that were out there, and they didn't really do anything like drastic. They were they were math geeks. Swap that with the word chess, and well, you got me. You know, do we have a math club at? I, not, I believe we did. I, I'm I'm sure we did. You know, you're in chess. Yeah, nerd. So <laughs> we got nerd. more. We got more girls than you. Football team. Oh uh, well, I was also le- theater too. I learned to learn to win a game. Uh, <laughs> what my fault? Actually, actually, to be fair, like I think Mojave like like went to title last year. Uh, more than that, I think they just got like this crazy like it's crazy out of nowhere. What's going on there? I don't know. We, we, so now we, suddenly we, we need to go back. To let them no, know no, that. we do, we do not need to go back. Just let them know that <laughs> you, you can survive out of my high We, high we do not need to go back. I want to go. There's back. nothing in my 32 year old body that wants to go back to Mojave. I freaking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now, 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 uh, she does fall for the uh, English teacher Sam Coulson, uh, and does become the uh, top student in the class. Right, uh, right. Now, after she's she's reciting uh, ex- excerpts from um, Shakespeare to uh, Sam. Uh, she has these horrible flashbacks, like you had mentioned, uh, to when she reads a poem about, uh, so reads it aloud in class to her her high school crush, the, the teacher. Uh, no, I'm sorry to take the, the flashback. She reads it to a kid named Billy Prince, and uh, who later <laughs> asks her to once again douchebag names, right? Billy Prince, yeah. Guy Perkins, Billy Prince. You know, it it, it has to it has to be up. three it has to be three syllables. Think about it. Billy Prince. Yeah. Guy Perkins. David Neff. You see? Just, just oh, so you are douchebags. A <laughs> so, so you are a douche. You got it. Mine's a little different, you know? Uh, but uh, he he, uh, he acted to, he acted to the senior prom and uh, making her dream come true in, in a sense. However, on the night of the prom, Billy arrives with a whole nother chick. Super douchey. Yeah. Super douchey. And not only that, but he has an egg. And this throw just lands directly in the middle of her chest. You know, of course she looks like hideous and whatnot, but oh man, like, like it's a fact, herpes. First of all, first of all, the fact that he made this throw in a moving limo mm-hmm. speaks to the talent of Billy Prince more than, <laughs> more like, than anything. Like, in the league, dude? Right, exactly. Like, like let's get this guy on a football team or something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, winds up humiliating her and, you know, breaks her heart. Uh, so while they, uh, 
as this kind of fast forwards a little bit, you you kind of you kind of get this dynamic of of you know when you're part of the popular kids and when you're not part of the popular kids, and and no and, scene and there's really speaks. Yeah, a huge difference. there is, and no scene speaks more upon this than the next one as they're driving out with uh, Aldous. Uh, Josie encounters a guy and his gang at the court, and they're drinking. They're just having a good time over there. And Aldous wants to take a, a part of it. But Guy Perkins literally comes up to the car and is just like, nah, y'all, y'all got to go down the road. Like, like this isn't a place for, for, for you guys. And, you know, for trying to do type. for your type, basically. And, and it really speaks on the dynamic of this because this is absolutely true. I wouldn't say that I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't part of that popular group, but I knew people in there. And, and, and if you were cool, you were cool. But you knew, but you knew for a fact if you weren't cool, like like you, you felt you could feel it. Yeah, you could feel it. You like it's a it. daily notion that you would basically feel. Mm-hmm. And I gotta say, for this movie, they really hit on that really well. Mm-hmm. If this was, if this movie like literally was just speaking as an anti-bullying campaign, it fucking nails it. Mm-hmm. Like like no like no problem whatsoever with it. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Okay, so to uh respond to that yeah you're right um the one of the things i do enjoy about the movie that it does know that you know the anti-bullying vibe so to speak so yeah. um and really take it from our own high school experiences it, it was you know me and you we met in what most would consider nerd zone the theater yeah, yeah of course but with me playing football and you being in the chess club you know it, and it, i was damn good looking back then <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, there's that there's that douchebag for you guys coming uh, right out. David Neff, the three syllables. <laughs> um, but no, but 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 the thing is, I, I had noticed right, and and and, and this really kind of dating back to high school for sure. I had noticed that the the vibe that you get when you are around the certain group of kids in high school life. For me, you know, I had to flip from being the football player and being around the jocks, if you will, right to. The theater kids, I enjoyed theater so much, and I wanted to be an actor so bad. Right, exactly. That, you know, and then kind of just kind of just mangling with the various groups. Like I knew well, plenty of nerds. Well, it's funny because they 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 tell you about that, like even getting out of high school, mm-hmm. like how you have to adapt to your surroundings. Like mm-hmm. I can't, I can't be one hundred percent myself at work. Right, right. Um, and I could be one hundred percent myself here because mm-hmm. I mean I know you guys at this at this point. And right. Y'all have adopted me at this point, but but it's very clear. And and this movie does a really good job of of what that dynamic change between uh, between the two is, and and something I really appreciate with this, especially in 1999, because a lot of that stuff is still happening in, in today's world. And especially and some people really can't really separate. They the can't too exactly. It's hard for them you know? exactly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, it, it's actually a really solid scene. Um, anyway, so Gus, who is John C. Riley, basically loses his shit. When he finds out, when he finds out that she's just like not part of the popular group, and it's not so much that he, it's not so much that he doesn't want her to enjoy this experience and whatnot. Well, their jobs are on the line for this, as right. we all saw how big of a dick Rickford is. Mm-hmm. You know, he just doesn't care. He will drop you for whatever family or not, <laughs> family or not. He's gonna drop you, mm-hmm. you know, to to get the readers and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, so he starts to kind of push for this to happen and for that to do so. The next thing is, is is a little a little long in the tooth, but it's 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 also a little fun, where uh, they implant a hidden camera into her. Well, not into her, but they 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 basically put like a little wing, you know, thing on her, and, and she's supposed to go and and they're going to give her direction on how to be like this Inter- popular chick. interact, right? Just right. to kind of interact. Um, and this actually becomes a kind of fun part for the movie because now you're seeing the rest of the office kind of like. Like partake into this. Uh, They're growing obsession to it, right? Exactly. Like, it what, felt like a reality show. In a sense. It's like it, it, it was basically the beginnings of of the real world, mm-hmm. you know, because the real world was going on at that time. Mm-hmm. Nobody realized how people love that shit, you know. And we had a show here. Well, not you and I, but Beat Network. We had okay. reality. Real, real TV. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to. Uh, uh, Ed, Roberta and Ebony. Uh, yeah, we did. And, and people were tuned in because they they're so right. locked in to just being able to watch someone else's life kind of play out on camera. Right. 
And I, for one, have never been into reality TV. I probably would never will be, but I, except for the real world, I was growing up. I really had a thing for the real world. Sure, yeah, because it, it, because Vegas, right? Well, 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 Vegas, Chicago, and Hawaii are my top three, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but the Vegas one was so huge, and because like we, we could see, people. yeah, <laughs> we knew people on it exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so it was weird. Anyway, so I uh, she does like this party thing. She winds up she winds up eating uh, uh, some pot brownies. And they just they mess her up, <laughs> as you would expect. Uh, it has a little bit of vitamin A and some vitamin B, some vitamin THC. As she as the dude hands over the uh, pop brownie to her, and she just like completely goes around and just starts kind of being this huge dork that she is. Mm-hmm. Um, has a little bit long of a scene dancing on the stage where she's like doing splits and whatnot. And I felt like this is, this was literally like they, they, they turned to Drew Barrymore and just said, all right, go. Right. And, uh, that's basically what happened. There. Side note, you ever seen a movie called boys on the side with mm. uh, Drew Barrymore, and Whoopi Goldberg. And I think Mary Stewart Masterson. Boys on the side boys or on the side. Boy, I'm boys on the side. Yeah. Or, uh, riding in cars with boys. No, boys on the side. No. It was an interesting flick, and then you know it definitely caters to the the personality that we come to n- know and love about Drew Barrymore, right? Because she does play that wild card in the movie as well. I think uh, the interest of her character is like her, like them, like like wrapping up her boyfriend after he like put his hands on her, and as they're leaving to like get in the car and take off, she like flashes them real quick, right? Exactly. And it's like it it seeing that scene where she just kind of just goes for it. That's the one thing, you know, uh, once again, I think this movie is fucking stupid, but the one thing about Drew Barrymore's talent is that she can adapt to the now and to really kind of showcase, you know, what she can actually do in the now. Right. And, and now thinking back to what uh, I saw, um, uh, her and Oliphant has a show on Netflix called uh, Santa oh, Clara uh, Diet. Clara Di- Di- fucking Di- awesome show. I haven't watched it. It's a great show, and even then, you know, with with her getting up there in age, she's not she's not old old, but you know, I mean, she, she's getting up there. She's getting up there in age, but she can still tap into that that energy, that energy, yeah. you know, that, that she carried when you're younger. You it's know? something that I really appreciate about Drew. Mm-hmm. Like I had a crush on her growing uh, growing up because she she brought such a fun personality, uh, such a fun part to her, and what felt like a lot of things that she that she used to do when it started to get a little bit more serious for her. You know, it, it, I wasn't really feeling it at that point. Mm. But like, you can't you can't deny a movie a, a movie like this or or the wedding singer especially like the wedding singer. She's so adorable in it. You almost fall in love with her like in that movie by, like by herself. Julia. Yeah. Um. Or Fifty First Dates. Like I prefer like, Fifty First Dates actually. And sure, and I do too. Fifty First Dates is a fun movie, it really is. especially like the first time that she like comes and out touching as well. Yeah, you know yeah. the first time she comes out like swinging at Adam Sandler with like the the car tire or whatnot, you right. know, you know, because he's trying to help her and whatnot, mm-hmm. you know, to to you know do all that. Ugh. I w- I would love to cover Fifty First Dates, you know, we, sooner than we could. We got a while, but we we got <laughs> got a good little. Bit. We, we got like five years. <laughs> Sucks. Uh, anyway, so no, so we're gonna fast forward a little bit. Uh, Sam and Josie are grow- growing a little bit closer. Uh, she did ask Rob for help because Rob was kind of like uh, Rob was this popular kid uh, who uh, was a big baseball fan. Mm-hmm. Rob decides to roll into the school, right. which is really weird because how did you not check his ID? Because Rob is for sure late twenties at this point, and he, <laughs> he looks, looks it. Old. He <laughs> looks old. Right. Walking into this, but you know he kind of does like the crazy David Arquette thing, which is. Fine. I, I enjoy I enjoy our cat and, and some things and other, other things. It's just really annoying. Um, Ready to Rumble is probably my favorite arcade. I love yeah. Ready to Rumble. He's one of my favorite arcade. Films. Ready to Rumble is seriously is is my favorite Oliver Platt performance mm-hmm. and it's my favorite arcade performance. Uh, Oliver Platt. <coughs> we'll talk about it off air. Oh, <laughs> oh man. No, I, I, I love it because him like Lake Placid is like it's a it's a guilty pleasure for me. Sure. And Oliver Platt makes that movie for me. I think Bill Coleman is so wooden, but Platt's Did you ever see him in, in the uh, the Iceman? Yes. So good. Awesome. He's so good. Oh, my God. It. I love Platt in that movie. He's awesome. <laughs> anyway, so, so. Oliver Platt and Bullworth. Yes. And Bullworth. Yeah, he's fantastic. 
Uh, anyway, so I come to find out Sam, uh, Sam is struggling kind of with his feelings for, for for Josie, which is a little a little weird, but it's not it's not horrendous because That's if you think about that, it, that vibe kind of comes a little bit. Yeah. But but it's why here's why I don't think it's so bad. She's for sure playing off a 17 year old graduating high school. Mm-hmm. So if it would have happened afterwards. Yeah, there's probably a bit of a creepy vibe afterwards, uh-huh. but at least you can learn to accept it, you know, because it's like, well, technically she's legally an adult and we never did anything before then. So right. it's kind of one of those things where it's like, all right, that's weird, but whatever we can, we can kind of live with. Um, one of the big themes in this movie is about the prom. I don't know why, but I uh, initially the theme was, high school was prom. Right, of course, yeah. uh, initially the theme was supposed to be about the millennium. But Josie stepping up to play, and this is where she really breaks through to become a popular kid as Rob is basically going around and and spreading these stories about Josie Geller that is obviously not true. But, <laughs> but you know, it kind of makes people see her in a different light, which mm-hmm. is a little interesting. Um, she winds up finding the theme for the prom, which is famous couples or, or famous couples in history uh, uh, meant to be together. Rosalind right? and Orlando. Rosalind Orlando is who they play. She gets asked out by uh, Guy Perkins. And at this point, the movie kind of starts getting to that, uh, to that third act where it's like, here's here's the one thing I didn't really care for. I didn't fully understand. I didn't, I didn't fully under uh, understood the chemistry between her and the teacher. Like, it's definitely student uh, student there. But it's like, I didn't see where he saw the value. You know what I mean? Uh yeah, I I understand that, and I think what kind of saves it from being that weird, awkward vibe, the whole teacher student thing, is the fact that he, as a teacher, while still thinking she's seventeen, right, he also feels like okay, I do like this girl, but this feels kind of wrong, right? Exactly. So that's that's kind of what saves it from being too weird about it. Which know? is which is it's good and and, and it's yeah, i'm glad they did that because they were they, because they do that a little too often especially in those in those movies you mm-hmm. know especially in 1999 so i'm glad they actually kind of like take that extra step to, do, to actually do so um but the prom basically happens uh drew barrymore looks terrific you know rob literally goes in this is again again a little weird he goes in as tom cruise risky business yeah and he's straight up in whitey tidies and whitey tidies and gym socks, and I'm like, how are you not immediately removed? How like, are you not expelled immediately? Immediately, that? but whatever. You're 28 years old, so I guess you can get the. <laughs> like, you're, you're just growing at this point. No, he he's playing a 23 year old. He looks 28, but right. Rob is technically 23. Um, he get uh, so she gets asked out. She goes. She winds up winning prom queen, and while having the big dance, and while having uh, one of the few dances that they have, because she. Actually, has a dance with Mister Col- uh, with uh, Mister Coulson. I, mm. uh, I, uh, the group of popular people basically want to play a prank on Aldous by feeding her dog food, right? Like, like dumping dog food on her. Right. Josie comes in to save the day, smacks it out, uh, smacks it out of the hand, and comes, <laughs> and and this is that bad writing I'm about uh, I'm about to talk about. So, slaps out of the hand. Sprays all over Jessica Alba and her crew and her crew of people, right? Right. And uh, they're like, they're like, we knew you were a loser. You're not fit to be the prom queen. And she's like, I don't even care that I'm the prom queen. I'm 25 years old. That's exactly how that line happened. When I heard that, no, no. When I heard that, I was busting up laughing. Like that is the. <laughs> you didn't have to reveal yourself there. She. Had no reason to reveal herself, if you honestly think about it. Mm-hmm. Like, she's just like, I don't even care about your stupid prom. I'm 25, I'm 25 years, years old. 25 years old. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Why did you reveal? You didn't have to but reveal. It was it was the situation and the location of where you were. When you kind of felt like, this is stupid. <laughs> why am I, like, why am I trying this hard? I'm grown as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm 25 years old. I have bills. <laughs> Why do I give a I'm shit? I'm the youngest copy editor of the Chicago Sun Times. You know, I'm clearly successful. I don't need this shit. I don't need this shit. <laughs> so why? I don't need this shit. It's, it's why. It's why I laugh so hard at this because that line was so unnecessary. It was like, 
It was like for all these movies that have come out that have talked about bets and whatnot, and you know, you get the reveal and everybody's supposed to be sad and whatnot, but it's like she honestly had no reason to reveal herself. I mean, but you know, the, the funny thing about it, why, like, the only reason, honestly, I'm sorry to cut you off, but, but, but the only reason that she wanted to reveal herself was because she liked Mr. Coulson. And because she wanted to push something there. That's he, the only he, but reason. But he himself was also hurt by the fact, oh, you lied to me. Right. She's, dude, I'm like, cool. cool. Oh, man. You no, mean, I'm not talk. actually a creep? No, we can talk. <laughs> cool. But who's also angry is Rob because he gets his second chance at being a baseball star. Yeah, in a he sense. really does. But, you know, uh, but Josie, you know, I feel like once the shit actually hits the fan, it's... Not a whole lot of time between. She I'm, hit the fan and end of movie. Basically, right. because you know um, we get this little quick uh, this montage of just all the shit that's happening. Like Rob's pack. I'm sorry, um, uh, Colson's packing up his shit to. I'm gonna assume move. I don't. And and on that, where where are you moving? Did to? he quit his job already? Why would he quit though? It wasn't his fault. You've done like, nothing wrong, right? Technically, see exactly, and that and that's where some of the logic issue comes in. Where it's like, it's like, okay, so Coulson's just packing. Why is he moving to a different area of Chicago? It was, it, it was no free motion, and that's and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But they literally, like, the whole point was he was going to move to New York with his girlfriend. But he literally said, like, twenty minutes before that, that I broke up with her. You think she's going to take you back if you move to New York now? No. No. No, no, no. no she's been gone at this point. But Josie does make amends with everybody. Uh, which, which securing uh, Rob so a coaching weird. job. Rob gets a coaching job. Right. But it's almost like the school never really thought, like, what the fuck were you thinking? Right. Exactly. In fact, in fact, the school was literally like, oh, man, we could really use your talents on the field as a coach now. You know? And it was literally like, like okay, think about this. It's prom, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say it happened that Saturday, right? Because that's when our prom happened. I think it was a Saturday. On Saturday. Yep. It happened on Saturday, right? So Saturday, first of all, she has to come into the office on Sunday, you know, mm-hmm. to basically apologize. By Monday morning, Rob is hired as a, as the assistant coach. All is forgiven. All, and he hasn't had, had to have the talk with a principal yet. Mm. <laughs> Again, some of the logic is a little weird. Anyway, so uh, this movie wraps itself up. We get the five minute countdown. We all know what's basically going to happen. You get the countdown that, that oh, happened. It's, she it's says, clear as day. Right, of course. You know, I'm sorry for hurting you. But by the way, how is this going to sell newspapers? You're, you're just basically like doing a blog post through through, <laughs> and, <laughs> through the and, newspaper. And, and typical movies like these, you always you always have the movie title somewhere sure, yeah. in there. So obviously the, the, the headline is called Never Been Kissed. Right. It was the same thing with 10 Things I Hate About. Exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, she goes out there. The whole fucking cast is there at this point. And, you know, they're all rooting for like, you brought the news out. Like, yeah. Yeah, you're going to kiss. You're going to kiss somebody. Because people uh. can relate to, you know, you. No. To, because, because people can relate for infiltrating a, a high school and falling in love with one of your teachers while you're basically lying to everybody that you're possibly working with just so you can get a story? I can't relate. I personally can't relate. I can't relate. <laughs> Actually, if, if this is 2019, somebody's going to jail. <laughs> Let's be real. So, so a movie wraps up. Colson comes in after the clock has expired, but they don't care. Uh, comes in and basically uh, gives her uh, gives her the kiss, and the movie literally ends there. There's no, there's no like, oh, well, what happens afterwards? You know, do- we don't care. Right, so it's exactly. hour forty five. Let's wrap this shit up. Exactly. So that would be never been kissed. Never been kissed. Now, let me just say this. I I, I, I stick by what I say was this movie, though it could exist in 2019, because uh, we're so PC today. It's certain things you, you just. You just can't get away with it. Well, but can this movie be remade? I don't think so. I honestly think it can, especially because there there is good moments when it comes to like when it comes to the anti bullying stuff. Like that is so key, especially with social media. Like mm-hmm. how how important that is. Mm-hmm. So I think they could kind of figure something out in ter- in terms of that. Um, in terms of having a reporter come in and, and kind of doing it that way. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they'd really have to kind of sell that in some way, shape, or form. Like it kind of have to be like, all right, you know how kindergarten cop is. Mm-hmm. Like, 
like the principal knows he's a cop, right? Clearly, yeah. The principal knows he's a cop, so he so she, but she just so she just kind of accepts it. So if the principal was in on it and basically was saying, "Oh, okay, well, we'll have you know be a big story, whatever. We'll feature your school, whatever, right?" You know, but I need somebody undercover. Then yeah, it could work. And you also got to think about like shows like Undercover Boss, right. like like that stuff works quite a bit and happens it happens all the time. So I think it could work. Um, I don't think it would be just as good because Drew Barrymore honestly really is a gem in this movie. What you would need somebody who can really pull out that young little. Like, it's hard to say like, hey, you see that new kid? Oh, the motherfucker with the goatee. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's sixteen. Yeah. No, he's no. grown as fuck. You, you couldn't <laughs> Right, yeah, no. You you couldn't you couldn't have a Rob in this movie. No. You could definitely have a Josie, but you can't have a Rob in this movie. And it really only works because he has that baby face. Ex- mm, sure. Yeah. Well, no, well, well, you'd have you, to specify. You'd have to get a fat kid with a baby face to basically play Rob. But even still, <laughs> you look like a fat grown ass man. Right. But you know, whatever. Anyway, All right, let's wrap this up. Little takeaways. Uh, who's getting your get that guy award? I'm going first today. Yeah, go ahead. I don't, I don't, okay. Uh, that guy award. I'll give it to Rob. Uh, Rob is so many people that I knew that we knew growing up yeah. in, in high school. Uh, I, I've questioned a lot of people who have that older look. Swear to God, they're seventeen, right? But you look like you're a solid twenty-four. <laughs> Just same. Uh, but but I love the energy that the RK brings to the role and the support system that he actually gives for Joe, even when he felt like he himself was, was betrayed, right? So to speak. But yeah, Rob. Uh, that chick award. This should be pretty easy. Oh, clearly, Josie. Yeah. Um, Drew Barrymore, while looks good in doing what she does, uh, I would say, dude, without this movie, this movie does not fucking work. Right. At it, all. Without Barrymore, this movie is, is not nearly as memorable as it is. Not at all. Uh, that full award. That full award. I'm going to go ahead and give it to Coulson. Because uh, while he does show signs of things that he knows that probably how he's feeling is wrong and he doesn't necessarily act on those feelings but he knows for a fact like i'm digging this chick but dude right. if this was sam jackson 187 you're going to jail you know and and the, and the difference between the two is the girl in 187 actually gets naked in his house <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> you know? That is pretty but bad. But it's almost like you didn't really take the time to really realize what was what were you facing. Right. That's of course. Uh, cut that out. Cut that out. Um, I'm going to say, if I can remember the shit. Um, I'm going to say the James Franco uh, banning the, uh, what was it, was it in the group again? The, the math denominators. Group, not, ban, banning the denominators from the, the, uh, the what's the name? Count? No. The court. The court. That was just too cheesy for me. Sure. It's almost like you've had those movies where the jocks kind of ran a certain burger joint or a certain kind of hangout spot that all the kids would go to. Who the fuck are you to tell me I can't hang out here? Right, exactly. You know, and yeah. I and I realized like at the, you know, with our own high, our, our own high school experiences, that's never happened. No, that's I, that's I wish you tell me I could hang out here. No, there there's uh that's never happened in our high school. No, sure. never. Uh, and iconic scene. Iconic scene will be um, that last, which is crazy because it has nothing to do with uh, Josie or Colson for that matter. But it's the last scene is when the camera's panning through the uh, once they've done their kissing and shit. The camera pans through and it shows the coach and it turn around. The coach is coach Rock. Yeah. But that's pretty dope because he kind of gets his second chance to kind of live out his dream in a sense. But except, sure. except being a player, you know what's time. weird? He's twenty three. Right, <laughs> there are still rookies in Major League Baseball right now. That's like twenty seven years old. It's like it's like Rob. You could totally like you could be a walk on to a minor league team, and they think you're good enough. Then you know I don't know. Yeah, it's just weird. Who's gonna give that guy award? All right, so that guy award is gonna go to Rigford, Gary Marshall. And I'll okay. tell you why. Because for the few scenes that he's in it, he is absolutely hilarious. He makes people cry. He, he fires his own family members, you know, even going, going to the game, even though he has a little bit of a cheesy line, like, like somebody kind of blocks his way and he's carrying this stick. He says, uh, uh, get your own sector. Right. He's like, he's like, get your own row, get yeah. your own row. <laughs> he just, he cracks me up because you realize that like that, that, somebody that insane and that eccentric has to be the one that, that publishes the story. Right. Uh, uh, that chicken work. Uh, easy. Drew Barrymore. Um, again, absolutely. You, you, 
you hit it when you say that uh, without without her, this movie doesn't work. Right. Um, there's a really great progression uh, with her throughout this where it's like she kind of like finds herself a little bit. And you can really tell, especially with how her outfits kind of go. At first, she was kind of dressing like and, – and, and the director was very smart about this – she was kind of dressing very conservative, like like the the outfits just wasn't really fitting her body at all. It wasn't that she looked bad. It's just not somebody that is out there to kind of gain attention uh, whatsoever. To the point where in the final movie, in the final scene, she's wearing a well-fitted dress on her that she looks terrific in in pink. Mm-hmm. Uh, the hair has completely changed into these curls instead of instead of the, the bun that looked fantastic on her, mm-hmm. you know? She really, she really grew throughout this, uh, and it's something that I think uh, people in general, you know, it doesn't matter if you're if you're a guy or a girl, can really look at her and say and say that's somebody that I can kind of admire. Yeah, okay, it was a little, it was a little weird for her to kind of hook up with Colson at at the end of it, but it's it's a '90s movie, and that and that's kind of where it was going to go right. always, you know. Um, but yeah, so Drew Barrymore, uh, that full award. I am going to actually give this to I didn't even talk about him. Uh Merkin. Okay. Sean Whalen. His face bothers Everything me. Everything about like like he was trying to make it seem like he was honestly trying to make it seem like like he ran the show. Like 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 the girls, the women come to me. The women you got a napkin? Write that down. The women are gonna come to me. You know, he's doing that and I'm like I'm like, look <laughs> again, douchebag name. Three syllables, Sean Whalen. Now, what was the line? Uh, Merkin's working with the Jerkins. Yeah, right? yeah, something like that. Something like that. Because like, Merkin is working. It's like it's like it's like not jerking. Shut up! Like throughout, throughout this entire thing, like he was, he 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 almost took you away from the movie. Right. You know, there's there's a lot of comedy with this. None of it involved him. Right. Um, where are we? Uh, cut that. Cut that out. Anything with Merkin. <laughs> I'm doubling down on this. I'm serious. Like, like he is absolutely – you You could have literally not have had him at all in the movie, and the movie would still be just as good, and you probably would have saved yourself three minutes of production costs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, iconic scene. Iconic scene. So this is a – unfortunately with this movie, like like it's pretty easy to kind of give it to the end scene because it is it is a little iconic. They they definitely like kind of – They get together. They, yeah, but it's more than just that. Like mm-hmm. like the whole crowd is like cheering for her and whatnot. Um, you know, and you, and you kind of you kind of get the get the point. But I am going to actually give it to – And uh, their kiss inspires others to kiss. Right. I'm actually going to give it to uh, the limo scene – when uh, Guy Perkins actually uh, actually comes up to to basically get get Drew Barrymore in, 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 into the vehicle because you get the flashback beforehand mm-hmm. of her getting egged right? right and him coming up with the hot girl but to actually see like like again that character development to kind of see him like come out romantically you know and he, and Jeremy Jordan presents the the white. Um, I don't think it was a rose. Like I don't know what kind of flower it is. So Ooh. somebody fact check me on that. Um, you know, to to kind of to kind of show that 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 difference and and not necessarily what what the years would do to you, but basically like like her like finally like gaining fully accepted and like people fully appreciating her. I think that's pretty iconic. And I really like that. All right. Well, uh, let's get into some uh, some quick hits here, so we can wrap this puppy up. Uh, quick hits. This is James Franco's film debut. That's right. All said right. that. Uh, Lily Sobieski was originally offered the role of Kristen, but she opted to play Aldis instead, of finding that character more interesting. See, and and she did that way too often in her uh, in her career. Mm-hmm. She she was in like eighty eight minutes, which is just basically a way to get De Niro and Pacino into a movie again. But then she was in like in the name of the King, Dungeon Siege, and yeah, she just. <sighs> She needed to fire her agent is what she really well, she needed to do. Anymore. It doesn't even matter anymore. No, she doesn't act anymore, but but that's probably the reason why. But imagine what would have happened if she would have fired her agent, she probably would have gotten a pretty decent role. Yeah. You know? You know. Not the not this crap that they gave her. Uh Drew Barrymore's first film for her own production company, Flower Films. 
We knew that. Yep. <laughs> uh, when Gary Marshall's character is speaking to his employees at the Chicago Sun Times boardroom, he says, "I don't even know my own kids." His real life daughter, Kathleen Marshall, is sitting <laughs> to his right when he's speaking. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, when Josie finds her car in the middle of the football field, the school band is playing the theme song from The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the Jordan Ladd, who plays Gibby, is the daughter of Cheryl Ladd, who co-starred with Drew Barrymore in Poison Ivy. Never saw it. Never saw it. Uh, Chloe Sevigny was was considered for the role of Aldous. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is the first of two films that Octavia Spencer and James Franco have appeared in together. The second was Spider-Man in 2002. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, during the film, Gus, played by John C. Riley, says, Who am I, the great and powerful Oz? James Franco, who made his film debut in this film, would have wanted to star Oz, yeah. Oz and Oz, yeah. very powerful. Uh, but one more. Oh, here we go. Andrew Wilson, brother of Luke and Owen Wilson, appears as the security guard. He also appears with Barry Moore in Charlie's Angels, Fever Pitch, and Whip It. Yeah, he's a, cool. So, yeah, good for him. Yep. Uh, Gary Marshall, by the way, for the uh, I know we talked about him and I didn't, and uh, I'm fact checking a little bit. So no, not related to Penny Kathleen was the daughter. I uh, director. Directed Pretty Woman, mm-hmm. uh, Beaches, Runaway Bride, uh, New Year's Eve, The Princess Diaries one and two. So he knows chick flicks like this. So it's so it's even more. So no relation to Penny. No relation to Penny. That's crazy. I, yeah. I remember for, for years I thought they were like father and daughter or something. But that is today's show. Uh, good one. Uh, yeah. I, well, you know, never because. Yeah. No, it's never so, been kissed. Uh, once, real quick, uh, we did announce that we would have uh, a guest on today's show. Uh, unfortunately, she was unable to make it because she have uh, other engagements in LA. But uh, shout out to Detai anyway. We'll hopefully we'll get her on, on another episode next week's show. We'll definitely have a guest on, and uh, we're actually bringing back a, a consistent guest on the show. Can't wait to have more. And the movie we're doing next week, I am pumped to do. I know you are. And, and the funny thing is, is that this is kind of why I built this lead with uh, with Two Minute Drill. Because I feel like you're about to catch up. All oh my up. god! I'm talking about next week's movie. I <laughs> cannot wait. Not only that, I cannot wait. I, I I've watched this movie at least three times a year. Wow! So I'm 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 pumped for it. With that being said, though, thank you guys for uh, hanging out with us. Danger Neff, where can they find you? You can always find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at David Danger Neff. I'm the co-host here. Back to the classics. I'm part of Beat Network, obviously. I uh, and we also have our own review show reel it back whenever we decide to bring that back whenever we figure out a good format that we can do that in we're seeing um, all the movies we're, not- we're seeing the movies we're just not doing the reviews and this is awful and we really need to do the reviews yeah. um but we'll get there uh you can always catch up uh, you can always catch us at the level up expo yes. april 26th through the 28th we will be working press media uh for there uh stop by you know, say hello to us. You know, we, we're always uh, anticipating fans to just kind of run up and say, oh, I know you guys. And, and it never happens. But but this is your opportunity to actually uh, prove me wrong, you know, so make the prophecy. Happen. I've had one. I have one in New Did York you? come and say hi. Oh, that's dope. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, My guy, Jay Alonzo, where can they find you? You can find me on all the social media simply at I am Jay Alonzo. That's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. You talk to me and I'll talk back. Of course, the uh, Back to Classes Movie Talk group, Back to Classes A Movie Talk group on Facebook is up and popping. We've had some fun on that joint now, man. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm really proud to see <clears> where we've come with that Movie Talk group. People are really like interacting. and It is. You know, it's, it's really fun now, so. I know. That, that now, I'm proud. Now, now that the slow season's over, that's why I've just been sharing whatever. Like anything I would just find remotely funny, it's it's going on there. <laughs> no. uh, 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 like Dave said, the level of, the level of expo is coming. Uh, we have many more content we're, we're putting together here at, at Beat Network and with Bachelor Classics. And um, that's about it. Did I miss anything? No, you're good. Well, we'll see y'all next week. Once again, we will have a guest on next week. Uh, this has been a good one. With that being said, I am Jay Lonzo, and with me, of course, is Danger Neff, David Danger Neff. This is Bachelor Classics. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.